cheap beer, but rich taste. <laughs> rich taste. <laughs> oh God, this big money you're throwing around. Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks to everyone who has. Thanks for coming back. You don't have to like this video yet. Make sure you wait till the end because you might hate it. Today you will be seeing the Keystone Girl in this video, so don't go anywhere. Beer! Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the thumbnail to this video. How to turn $100 into $800. That's pretty intriguing. That's a lot of money. So how are we going to do that? Typically, a 4x8 sheet of 16 gauge to 12 gauge mild or cold rolled steel is roughly around $100 per sheet. A uh, 4x8 sheet is probably the largest that you can do on this machine. It's only 3 foot by 4 foot roughly. Uh, but you could set up some rollers or some saw horses and you could get a 4x8 sheet to sit here and kind of move it through as you cut it. Typically the signs that I like to cut are circular signs and I like to keep them no larger than 2 foot in diameter. The reason being is because I can fit 8 of those perfectly on a 4x8 sheet of steel. This is an example of a circular sign that I cut for members of the local that I work out of. Uh, I put their last name in it. It's got our local number in there. And I typically sell these for $100 a piece. The guys love them. They hang them up in their garage. Um, finding that niche uh, market of who you're going to sell these signs to, that's going to be up to you. The other thing that I will do is with the leftover pieces of that sheet of steel after I cut those eight circular signs out of it, I also cut these garden markers. They're roughly three inches by about nine inches wide. I weld a little post on them. I sell them for $10 a piece, or I sell them three, three of them for $45. Uh, they're 14 gauge steel. The things will last forever. People love them. So there is potential to even make more than the $800 that I mentioned in the thumbnail. Hmm. That was random. All right, so in my last plasma table video, I mentioned that I would be doing a step-by-step -step detailed video of the entire process uh, so that you could get a really good idea if this is something that you even want to try to get into or if it's just maybe not for you. So we're going to find an image, a design, we're going to upload that into the CAD program, we're going to trace it with the CAD tools, create a cut path, export it to Fire Control, which is the software that communicates with the plasma table, and then we're going to cut it, clean it up, paint it or clear coat it and get it ready to sell. Before we get started on that, let's go ahead and take a look at Langmuir Systems website page so I can kind of show you these tables, the prices on them, the different tables that they have. They have three different variations, kind of like a small, medium and a large. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this right now and um, then we'll get started. Okay, just to be clear, I am not sponsored by Langmuir Systems. I actually reached out to them at one point to see if they wanted to have an affiliation with my channel and they rejected me. They said I did not have enough subscribers. So bombard them with emails and tell them to reconsider. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Langmuir's website. So here it is, langmuirsystems.com. Let's go ahead and take a look at what they've got. They have their three plasma tables. This is their Langmuir Crossfire, Crossfire Pro. This is the one that I have. And then they have their uh, Crossfire XR, which is a 4x8 table. This is their newest plasma table. It's a pretty nice machine. They've got some other YouTube videos out on it if you want to check it out. Um, you can get on this website. It'll give you all the pricing, all the options. You don't have to contact them for pricing, none of that. They're very straightforward. This is their new MR1 machine for CNC milling. This is brand new. They just sent me an email a couple of days ago, actually, on this one. So I don't know a whole lot about it. And then they also have this arc flat welding table, which is kind of like a precision welding table. They're pretty pricey. If you're doing precision welding and fabricating, it's definitely a must have, but um, that's what they've got to offer as far as products. They have a good support. They get back to you pretty quickly. Uh, they have a forum also where a lot of guys that have these machines, they talk to each other. They talk about issues and troubleshooting and all kinds, I mean, there's tons of information on here. If you ever have an issue, you can resort back to this forum and very likely find your answer. This is probably one of the coolest things that they have, this FireShare. Go ahead and show you what this is. Basically, guys create 
their own files with their own projects and then they actually go ahead and share them with uh, Langmuir and you can go on here and you can actually download their already created files that are ready to cut and cut them on your plasma machine. So they already did all the legwork for you and, and any of these designs you can take into your CAD program and you can alter them. So you can put your name in them, you can put anything you want on them. Uh, you can kind of use them as a starting point. So this is a great feature. There's tons. I mean, you can see there's 36 pages of already created designs. So really good thing to have. It's a pretty good uh, company, pretty good system. I have had no issues so far. Um, that's really about it for this. So let's go ahead and look at the design that we're going to use for today's cut. <laughs> Subscribe. Where am I? All right, the next thing we're gonna do is find our design, which I've already picked. We're gonna use the YouTube play button logo. So I basically just went online, uh, Google images, and typed in YouTube play button logo. So here is what I found. I'm gonna use this YouTube logo right here. I'm basically just going to click on that and save it to my downloads. And then I'll check and make sure that it's saved. And then we can open up Fusion. All right, the next step, we're going to open up Fusion 360 and we are going to upload the image of the YouTube logo. We're gonna insert that as a canvas. So we're gonna insert from the computer, the desktop, and open. And we have to pick a plane, and that is it. We're gonna turn this to face us, zoom in on it. I'm gonna use this canvas tool here and I'm gonna calibrate it. So basically I can click on each side and I can tell it how wide I want that to be. I'm gonna want this to be 12 inches wide. So once I do that, I can zoom back out and that is 12 inches wide. Okay, now that we have our image size, the first thing that we're gonna do is since this is not a perfect rectangle, you can see it's got like a slight curve to it and then you have our curved corners. I'm gonna use this spline tool right here and I'm just kind of going to pick a point on the edge, pick a point in the middle, and back to the other side. And you'll see it already gives me a line uh, to keep it the same, then I just double click it. I'm not the greatest at explaining this, there's a guy named Lars Christensen who is phenomenal. This is where I learned how to use the CAD. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing on this end. I will leave a link for Lars Christensen's YouTube channel. He's very good at ex explaining all this, much better than I am. And I am not a professional or expert at CAD. All right, we're just gonna try to get these kind of close. All right, now that we have the basic outline of that outside perimeter there, I'm gonna use this fillet tool and push this up in the corner and it should register, there it is. And then we're gonna pick how big of a radius we want on there. So that's a little bit too small. So let's try 1.25, still too small. Let's try 1.5, that's pretty close. Let's try 1.6, I'm gonna go with 1.6. Now we're gonna carry over here and it should match it. All right, so there is the basic outline of it. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the triangle. That's easy, just hit the L. That gives you the line tool. And we're gonna just pick the corners out. And that's it. Okay, so there is our basic outline of the YouTube play button. And then we can go ahead and click this button, which will get rid of the canvas and that gives you our new vector lines of the YouTube play button. Now from here, I'd like to add YouTube across the bottom of this. So in order to do that, I'm going to create another line across the bottom. I'm gonna kinda try to match the contour of the one that's already there.
And then I'm going to move this one down a smidge. Okay, then I'm going to click this line and I'm going to hit X, which is going to turn it into a construction line. Then I'm going to click it again, right click it and hit text on path. From there, I'm going to write YouTube. And you can see it right here. I want to center it in there, so I'm going to hit center. And then I'm going to pick my font. Um, let's go with, that looks kind of like YouTube's lettering. So now we're going to make this bigger by the height. Let's try an inch. It's a little too small. Let's try two inches, a little too big. 1.5, uh, let's go 1.6, I think that looks pretty good right there, so we'll hit OK, and then I'm going to click on that line, hit the delete button, get rid of it, I'm going to click on the lettering, right click it, and hit explode text, and from there you'll see that it actually gives me vector lines for all them, and then I have to go ahead and add bridges into this. So I'll add those bridges that will make all of this one piece and then we'll be ready to turn this into a body. And what that does is it makes it all one connected piece. Otherwise, when you cut those little pieces out of the middle of the B and the O, they would just fall through and you would just have one big circle. So there is our piece for YouTube. Now the next step, we're going to turn this into a body. So I have it highlighted and then I hit the letter Q and it allows you to make this actually have a thickness to it, you could see. Uh, what we're gonna do is, I like to do 0.1, and that just gives me a thin piece, which is what the actual cut piece of steel will look very similar to. So there is our YouTube button, ready to cut, pretty basic, pretty easy. Let's go ahead and go to Manufacturer. This is where we're gonna create our cut path. The first thing that we're gonna do is the setup on it. Actually, the first thing we're gonna do is I like to change this to inches. And then I go to Setup. All right, in Setup, Model Orientation, um, the stock point, your box point is going to be the corner where you want your zero axis to start on the plasma table. So this will be the bottom left corner of the plasma table. That's where you'll set your torch head to start the cut path. That's an easy way to reference how you want to lay this thing out on your actual plasma table. Um, and then you have your body, which is this. Now it's showing nothing. You click on it. That's the body that we're going to cut. The second step is... Um, <laughs> Asking if you want any excess steel around the cut, which we don't. And then you're going to go to the program name, which we're going to just call it YouTube button. And that is it. Now we have to go to our cut path. Uh, this we're going to select our tool. We have to go to the library, our razor cut 45, which is the plasma cutter that I use for this. And I like to bump up these cut rates to about 65, 65 inches per minute. The second piece is going to be what you want to cut. I like to make these a body. That way when you cut them, it finds all your cut lines for you. All those, all that red line, that highlighted line around everything is individual cut paths. It doesn't show the arrows, but there's a certain direction that it cuts on the inside of the outside of those lines. This middle step, we don't really need to do anything in that. Um, and on our last step, uh, this is our sweep in rate, which I like to do at 90 degrees. And then our lead in distance. Um, these, I'm not going to get too specific with these. There's a lot to it. Um, if you ever get this machine, they'll kind of talk you through all this process. Now it's going to create the actual cut path, which it's 100%, it's done, there it is. You're gonna start right here. Now we're going to export this into the post process. 
And here, there's more settings, of course. I've changed some of these and file, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna post this. Now this will create an NC code, which is a G code that communicates with the fire control software that communicates with the plasma table. I know all this seems kind of confusing, but once you do it a couple times and you figure it out, it's really not that bad. I just don't want to get too detailed because this video can get very boring very quickly. Don't forget about the giveaway. When I hit 1000 subscribers, I'm going to be cutting a custom sign of your choice, two foot in diameter. It could be square, it could be circular, whatever you want, any kind of logo, sports team, whatever you want. All right, that is it for the CAD design on the YouTube logo. So the next step is going to be getting the plasma machine set up, get it all plugged in, hooked up to the laptop, and then uh, we can go ahead and get started on that cut. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to plug in the actual uh, plasma table controller, which is just normal 120 volt receptacle like you would have in your house. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to plug in the plasma cutter, which is a 30 amp, 240 volt feed. Next thing on the list, we're going to plug in the air to it. I have an air dryer on the side. We're going to turn on the plasma cutter itself, which I have mounted underneath here on a bracket. And then we're going to turn on the plasma table controller, which is mounted to the side of the plasma table. All right, next thing we're gonna do is throw a piece of steel on here. This is a piece of scrap 14 gauge steel I had just from some other cuts that I did. Uh, we only needed it to be 12 inches wide. I think I'm at like 12 and a half inches, so it should just fit on here. You could really put this anywhere on the table because when we set the zero axis, we'll put it on that bottom left corner just like we did on that original cut program in Fusion 360. Next thing we're gonna do is hook up the ground clamp. Almost like we were welding on something, it needs to have a ground. I always like to use the little grinder here, clean up a little bit to get down to good bare steel so we have a good ground connection. All right, now that we got the table all set up, we're gonna get into Fire Control, which is the software that communicates with the Langmuir Plasma table. So there's a little USB cord that can, goes to the controller on the plasma table. All we have to do is plug this into the computer. Okay, here we are on Fire Control. Now we're going to upload the play button. Let's see if we could find it here. All right, so here is our YouTube play button NC. We're gonna open this up. There it is. You can see with these lines, this right here is going to be our zero axis. This will be the bottom left corner of that steel. So that's where our torch head will start. Then it'll travel over and start making the pierces and continue through all these cuts until it finishes with the outer perimeter and then that'll be it. So let's go ahead and get the plasma torch head over here to the zero axis. And then once we get it in that place, um, we will hit the zero all axis button and then that will put the torch head right here in the corner and then we can start our cut. All right, now we're gonna put that torch head right on the bottom left corner of that piece of steel and that will be our starting point. Right there looks good. All right, now that we've zeroed in our X axis, this thing's ready to cut so now we're just going to hit the start button and let it do its thing. of a pro tip for you these plasma tables they've got a water table here that keeps the steel cool well the best way to quench that steel a little touch of keystone 
The steel likes that. So do I. All right, that is it for the cut. Let's move this torch out of the way. Of course, the camera stopped recording like halfway through the cut, but I've got plenty of videos where you can see me cutting things on it. There is the finished piece right there. We'll go ahead and get this thing cleaned up, weld a couple of uh, standoffs on it, and get it ready for some clear coat. All right, next thing I'm gonna do, I got this thing all dried off. I'm gonna clean up all the dross on the back side of it. Just a little bit of slag pieces back here. So I'll get all that cleaned off. I like to use like this uh, four inch cold chisel for that. Then I like to use this two inch Milwaukee angle grinder or die grinder. Uh, I'll have links for all the tools that I use in the description below. I'll also have links for all of the other videos that I have where I use the plasma table in it. And I uh, also have links for Lars Christensen, who does a ton of videos on Fusion 360, the CAD program. And I'll have uh, Langmuir Systems website on there in case you wanted to go to their website and check out some of their plasma tables. On when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise with your on All right, here it is, the finished product. I got the mounting standoffs welded on the back side. This will hold it off the wall by like a half of an inch. On the front side, I got a metal finish. I'm just going to uh, clear coat it with some matte clear coat. I got my fancy Spicer Design sticker on here. I'm gonna go ahead and sign the corner of it. I'm gonna have the Keystone Girl sign the corner of it. She'll be out here in a little bit to do that and bring me a cold one. And I'm gonna auction this thing off. Leave your highest bid in the comments. Whoever's got the highest bid in two weeks, May 7th on a Saturday, it's yours. I will ship this thing to you. I'll pay for the shipping. If the highest bidder backs out, then I will contact the next highest bidder and uh, it'll be yours. I guesstimate this thing's worth one to $200,000, but likely it'll probably go for under $10. Well, or maybe no one will bid on it. Anything that you can do supports the channel and we appreciate it. All right, let's get that Keystone girl out here, get her to sign this thing, and bring me out a cold one. Yeah. Thanks for the beer. Hey, can you go ahead and sign this thing? We're gonna auction it off to some of the watchers. Uh, I'm thinking it's gonna go for probably one to $200,000, but um, you never know. Thanks for the Keystone. You're welcome. Ice spitter gets it. <laughs> oh God, this big money you're throwing around. Get the hell out of here. All right, that wraps up today's video. I hope that I provided you with some good information on this plasma table and the whole process. If you have any other questions on this plasma table or the process, feel free to ask me in the comments. I look at them regularly. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. I will also leave my email address in the description below. Anyways, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. I really shouldn't be drinking this at 7 in the morning. I've seen a lot of people who don't know what work is. I've seen a lot of people who don't know what thirst is. I've like a had fine a taste wine. of and tried to cure the sickness. But I just keep my head down and focus on the facts. I'm setting down gravel.